Hey there, world. It's Dinosaur George jumping right into it. This episode, which happens to be episode number 177, the highlighted item for this is a Smilodon canine, the big saber tooth from the saber tooth cat uh, that everybody knows and loves. This is item 3031. This item sells for $9, which makes it a very good bargain. Smilodon has those gigantic large canines. These canines were, I believe, molded off of one of the specimens that came out of the La Brea Tar Pits. That's where I think the original came from. Don't hold me to that, but I'm almost certain that's where it's from. So if you'd like a neat piece to add to a collection, here it is. This, of course, is a a replica. I do not sell authentic fossils, only reproductions, casts, and replicas. All right, let's jump into it. Dennis from Inglewood, New Jersey. Out of curiosity, might some raptors in Truodon have been small enough to survive the KT event to eventually evolve into some modern birds? I know this may very well be the dumbest question you've heard thus far, but it's a topic that's been bugging me to no end lately. I just can't believe that as varied and to some extent the intelligence these dino birds had that they were all wiped out by the KT meteorite. Dennis, there is nothing wrong with this question and I don't want anyone to ever feel like a question they sent me is considered dumb. There simply are no dumb questions. Uh, some questions are not as, as, as great as others, but none is dumb. If you're taking the time to write, then I'm taking the time to respond. So never think that your question is dumb. It's a good question. So why did the little dinosaurs, especially the little theropods, why did they get wiped out? How come they weren't able to survive when birds living alongside of them did? Certainly there were crocodiles and alligators that were much larger than some of the little theropods. So why did they go? Here's what I believe, Dennis. I think that the extinction had more to do with the changing of oxygen percentage than I do with the massive change in environment. To me, it is the only logical explanation that would describe why such a variety of animals lived. If your body is designed to use a certain oxygen percentage, let's say you're driving a Ferrari, your Ferrari is made to burn high, uh, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? The percentage of, of octane, high octane. Wow, isn't that hard? High octane, if your engine is made for burning high octane fuel and somebody puts diesel in your engine, you simply cannot function the way you would normally. You cannot chase prey. You cannot reproduce because you literally become breathless. So I think it was the oxygen percentage that dropped and literally caused the extinction of dinosaurs and other animals. Crocodiles don't care about oxygen percentage, neither do bugs, neither do mammals, neither did reptiles, but dinosaurs, I think, had become so specialized that when that changed within their environment, they got wiped out worldwide. That's the only answer I can come up with of why little dinosaurs died alongside of the big ones. Birds, I think, were forming into something different, and that didn't phase them. So that's my best guess. But that's a very good question, Dennis, and thanks for asking it. Okay, Corey from Perth, Western Australia. Hey, Dinosaur George, I love your YouTube videos. They're awesome. Thank you, buddy. I enjoy making them. My question is, do you agree with the theory that Taurosaurus is a juvenile Triceratops? No! No, I do not. Good question, Corey. I do not ab agree with that. I think that it makes no sense in the animal kingdom for an animal to completely reconfigure its head because it doesn't serve a purpose in my opinion. Now, certainly the size of the frill, the condition, the shape of the horns, all those things probably help to identify adulthood within it, like for instance, uh, deer and, and moose and that kind of thing grow larger antlers as they get older because it demonstrates they are more mature. So it may have been beneficial to have a larger or more frilly frill, but I don't believe it makes sense that it would reconfigure itself to look completely different. The reason why I don't believe Triceratops, why we've ever found babies and all those other questions that people bring up is because I don't believe Triceratops was a lowland animal. I think they spent the majority of their time in environments that weren't as likely to cover it in sediment when it died. Therefore, it didn't become fossilized. I think as they got older, maybe they moved down into the lowland floodplains where it's more likely that you'll get buried. So maybe we're finding bigger triceratops 
because they have working their way into an area where it's more likely they will become fossilized. Um, we don't know of any of the upland dinosaurs. I don't think we do. I, th I think there are dinosaur species that never had much of a chance of being fossilized because they simply weren't in the areas where flooding occurred and their bodies got buried. Who knows what was living in the upland woodlands or the hills or the mountains? Who knows what was up there? It's such a fascinating thing to think about. But I do not think that Chasmosaurus became Triceratops. I don't think Taurosaurus became Triceratops. I think these animals were very distinctively different and didn't change that dramatically over their life. Noah from Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. Hey, DG, really glad you liked Dinosaurs, the movie from 1985, because I did too. I liked it, Noah, and I, I, you and I talked about that. I have two questions. In some forms of media, I see ornithomimids portrayed as eating eggs. Would they have eaten eggs in real life? Um, yes. All predatory dinosaurs, all omnivorous dinosaurs are going to eat eggs because eggs are a package filled with nutrients and they're very good. If you find an unguarded nest, you eat them. But the notion that that's how they make their living to me does not make any sense. Because if an animal becomes specialized, it has to presume that dinosaurs laid eggs year round or that all the different species took turns making sure that there was always food for the ornithomimids to have. See what I mean? Doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, so I suspect that they would have eaten anything they could find, including lizards and bugs and, and anything. I think they were uh, egg eaters, but not specifically egg eaters. Your second question was Monoclonius and Centrosaurus, a separate species of Ceratopsians. Ah, once again, just like the question I asked for Corey from uh, Australia. Yes, I think Monoclonius and Centrosaurus were different animals. Uh, I think that now, in one aspect, I think we go overboard. Like there was at one time something like, what, 22? species of Triceratops named or something like that. So I do think we sometimes go too far to the one side where any slight variance between them justifies a new species name. But when they are distinctive enough and you find numerous specimens that show that distinction, then in my opinion that, that justifies them having their own species name. Okay. Bondok from Romania. Hey, George, I'm a big fan of yours. Thank you, buddy. I want you to answer a question for me, which is some of my friends and I were having a lot of debates. Glad to hear you guys are debating. Could Tyrannosaurus reach the length of 14 meters and weigh 12 tons? Thank you if you answer my question. And yes, I have the name of a dinosaur. Yes, you do, Bondok. There is a dinosaur named with your same name. How cool is that? Okay, could it reach 14 meters and did it weigh 12 tons? I think that might be an overestimate because at some point in time, land animals have limitations to how big they can become. Weight becomes an issue. Whales grow giant because water supports their mass, so they don't have to have the musculature and, and uh, skeletal design to support the weight. But on land, you have limitations before you get so big that you cannot move around very efficiently. Sauropods are an example of that. They, they were probably incredibly slow because they had no rush to be anywhere when you're that big. But a predator doesn't have that luxury. A predator's got to be fast enough to hunt its prey. Sauropods weren't a major part of Tyrannosaurus's life. And the reason why I bring that up is because if he was gigantic, the only thing he could really chase would be sauropods. What's really in his, his uh, environment are duckbills and are the hadrosaurs and ceratopsians. And they had relatively quick speeds. So he had to be able to match or exceed their speed, at least for a short distance, to catch them. So my guess would be he probably wasn't as big or heavy as you guys are, are discussing. Okay, Matt from Dublin, Ireland. Hello, George. I was watching a documentary about Truodon in which they hypothesized that he could have become as intelligent as a human had he not gone extinct. However, I thought that this was a bit of an exaggeration as dinosaurs lived 180 million years ago and didn't involve intelligence above a dog's. While the Cenozoic has lasted only 65 million years, we have advanced rapidly. Is this because its environment selected for brute force, or are mammals predisposed to intellect or intelligence? Wow, this is pretty cool. Okay, and by the way, he says, and thank you for these videos and keeping me interested in paleontology. Matt, I'm happy to do it. Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. They, they proposed a, um, they proposed that um, Truodon could have become almost humanoid-ish. 
I, I think that was strictly a wild guess. I, I mean, certainly there was a lot of thought put into it, but it would be impossible to project the evolutionary track of anything. We don't even know what we're going to look like a million years from now. So. Um, I don't think that would have been possible. I think that was a stretch. Tis, because to your point, to go from the brain that makes you less intelligent than a dog to becoming humanoid is a gigantic leap. Dogs were here before us, yet our brains have evolved dramatically quicker. Theirs haven't changed that much. So I do not believe that a dinosaur ever could have reached a level of intellect. Even though Truodon was intelligent beyond most of the things it lived with, I do not believe that that would have been possible. So I agree with you, Matt. Okay, finally, Matthew from Stewartsville, New Jersey. What's up, DG? What's up, Matthew? In a fight between Tyrannosaurus and Spinosaurus, could Spinosaurus use its advanced fingers and hands to grip into Tyrannosaurus's neck and break it like in Jurassic Park 3? P.S. What is your favorite dromaeosaur? Mine is Deinonychus. Deinonychus used to be mine. It was mine forever until I started reading about Utah Raptor, and then that became my favorite dromaeosaur. Now, as to your question about Tyrannosaurus and Spinosaurus, never met, never had anything to do with each other. But let's say for the sake of your question, they did come together. Again, the claws, the, the damage inflicted by claws has limitations, and that is how much power you have in your forearm and your mus muscle system. Driving them deep into an animal has limitations because you're not using the entire force of your giant muscles. You're pushing forward with your muscles and then bringing down. In most cases, all the downward thrust is being controlled by this muscle, and it's not very big in Spinosaurus. So I think he made a nasty scratch. The flip side of that is when Tyrannosaurus brings those jaws shut, the end of the game, that's it. It's game over. That's it. He's done. He's going to crush the bones within the body. Those claws are never going to do that. So in my opinion, I don't think it would be possible for something like Spinosaurus to be able to dispatch a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now, let me say for the record, for all the Spinosaurus lovers out there, yes, that is a big dinosaur. Yes, it's got big teeth and yes, it's got big claws. But in this particular case, I do not think it would have the ability to win in a fight. All right, you guys, thanks so much. Got to get filming a couple more of these as quick as I can. If you submitted questions early, um, just keep watching because chances are we're shooting yours question in one of these upcoming videos. I'm shooting nine videos today and I'm trying to knock them out as quick as I can. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Later.